recording, yes. Okay, so yeah, uh -huh. I got the keys to the whole on network <laughs> channel. And um, yeah, I won't go joyriding. I will try to drive it responsibly. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why. You know, some sort of, I don't know, psychedelic phenomenon has uh, created this reality. <laughs> and uh, so yes, I'm making a video, my video, on this channel. So yeah, I'll try to be respectful of the theme here, which is like this human communication thing, which is really good. And this idea that human beings, you know, like this guy, <laughs> and others, that they should care about each other and love each other and uh, feel all good about our togetherness. Together. <laughs> yeah. And that would be really swell. Um, you know, I'm all for people feeling better. I guess that's really what it's all about, is feeling better about your existence, not feeling like you're an outsider, like you're something that doesn't belong, that you're disconnected from the other consciousnesses out there, that they're judging you, or that they're in your way, or that they're hostile to your interests. And who wants to live that way? Who wants to live fighting with the humanity? I mean, that's really dumb when we have these natural forces that are trying to kill us. <laughs> we have these natural circumstances that are, you know, impose such a hardship on us. And yet we waste so much energy just fighting with each other, just trying to get to communicate the simplest things to each other, just saying words like, I'm afraid, or I'm in pain, or I need something. And, uh, yeah, it's just very tragic. So, uh, all these people are uh, swell people, really. I mean, they care, and that's a great thing. And so I'm going to support that, because that's a good thing, <laughs> you know. And um, they have a respect for trying to liberate the best of us, and to liberate the core of us. And they're going to do it with words like heart, and spirituality, and you know, stuff that just isn't going to fit into my brain, but the theme, the idea of it is, is supportable and defendable, and this is what human beings should strive for, is something better, um, even if these people might deny the existence of um, an achievable goal, maybe if they you know, see some purpose in conceding to some sort of natural place in the world for humanity, um, and that I might call that accepting mediocrity. Uh, the point is, is they're striving for better than what we have, and that's really important. Uh, you know, but the basic underlying argument is going to always be difficult. You know, this idea that there is an agenda for the human species here that we have some role besides recognizing messes and cleaning them up. And, like I said, I mean, we, we can agree, though, that the first mess to clean up is the mess we are making. <laughs> I mean, the mess we're making with our own inability to communicate with each other, to not step on each other's toes, to not exploit each other, and degrade each other, and cheat each other. Um, yeah, I mean, that's all just such bad news. And, uh, you know, um, you know, there's just so many, there's so many angles to this, but everybody is coming from their own perspective, so it's hard to argue it as if it was one um, generic beast, because some people are naturalists, and some people are hopicists and heavenists, and, you know, they have all different kinds of theories on where our ultimate salvation will be found, you know, where, where, where the singularity lies, what direction you're going to find the singularity, the, <laughs> the ultimate completion of our um, travel, our road. And uh, unfortunately, I, I don't see that as being, you know, we're not going to like the answers. It's, a, a, uh, it's almost a, it's a destination that intelligence obligates us to go to, to find out what is life, to answer the question decisively and definitively and specifically and accurately. There's an intelligent obligation to do that. But the answers aren't going to be pretty. 
the answers are likely going to be we're just trapped in a bowl of material mush. The universe is crudely doing crude universal things. It's hydrogen and helium and a lot of other elements blowing up all over the place and spiraling around and spinning out of control and all of that. And uh, we've just been caught up in the mix. Um, we're just a, a byproduct. We're not the agenda. And uh, it's, it's uh, that the sad truth could be that this tragedy is just part of the mechanism. That it, it has no judgment, so it can't not create tragedy. So it creates it because it doesn't know how not to. <laughs> and uh, it's just a sad truth that that's the nature of nature, of that whatever is, is thing. It is what it is, and it isn't guided by design. It isn't designed, and that's the fundamental problem. It's not designed with an intelligent agenda. And so we're stuck as being here, as being the child of that bastard intercourse. Uh, probably the wrong way to put it, that sloppy intercourse. <laughs> um, that uh, drunken intercourse, that reckless intercourse, and uh, it's not a good beginning, it's not a good origin, uh, but certainly we can make the best of it, we can appreciate the best of it, we can recognize the best of it, and say there is um, dignity <coughs> to our vulnerability, to our emotional vulnerability, to our capacity to, to shed a tear over beauty our tragedy, our ability to be struck by something, um, to be absorbed by it, to be distracted by it, to be uh, owned by our contemplation of it. Uh, and there's a power to that, a meaning to that, because it's part of this expression we have, this this capacity to feel, and it's, um, it's, it's intuitive to see meaning in that, um, and there is meaning in it, even by a rational standard, because it's coming from this, this core of a sentient feeling thing, and that's a, a powerful thing, it is the source, I would claim, of all meaning in the universe. And it exists not just in a human being reading poetry, but likely it exists in a, um, I don't know, pick an animal. Pick, pick, a, pick an animal that's striving to complete a, a mission programmed into its, its being. Um, there, there, there's um, power and, and value uh, caught up in the welfare and in the, the failure or the triumph experienced by that sentient thing and uh, it's too much for us to maybe contemplate our how, how we can do anything to to compensate for all the unfairness that exists in the universe um, that we know on earth the the sentient universe it's like this little cat you know has a broken leg that he's had to live with his whole life well, his whole life with me anyway. Um, you know, and he'll have a, he has a life and he'll have a death. And um, hopefully, you know, I can say hopefully because I care about the little animal. Because he's here in my arms. But there's billions of them running around out there now. No one's caring about them. No one's saying I hope for them. Um, and they're going to be left to some some tragedy, some horror, cancer and bugs and some other, some other fate, uh, you know, to, to end up being crocodile food or something, and uh, another sentience will be ground up by the machine, and it's something to be emotional about, and it's something to contemplate in terms of how can we, what can we do? But again, I guess the purpose of my contribution would be to say the first thing we can do is to try not to be preposterous assholes. 
to try not to get so distracted by our our uh, our offense at each other's existence and offense at each other's politics and offense at each other's statements and offense at everything that we do nothing to fix it and uh, so anyway yeah that's probably enough of a video so sort of friendly it's not terribly terrible <laughs> so I'll try to make a positive contribution to the conversation taking place among people who give a damn. Yeah.